Good morning. Good morning. If you would, if you would open your Bibles to Matthew chapter sixteen. Matthew sixteen. Uh, this week we're going to be looking at some at what the Catholic Church teaches, but we are in particular looking at three claims that they have uh, and address them from Scripture of, of the many things that are wrong with regard to what they their belief system is. Um, so first one uh, we're going to be looking at is in Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16. Now this is going to be a little bit of an overview because of pastor already having addressed this a little earlier. Um, I'm pretty certain it was here. I know we addressed this in Miami Beach pretty thoroughly as well with Pastor Bruce down there. Uh, but Pastor Price, um, if I'm recalling correct, he had just preached through this here correctly. Matthew 16. Okay. Because <laughs> I remember this like literally within the last two weeks, this was this was covered like in depth. So I must have been in Miami Beach then. Okay, so, we, all right, Matthew chapter 16, Matthew 16. Um, starting in verse 13, starting in verse 13, it says, When Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And then they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, or, or Elijah, and then other Jeremiah, or Jeremiah, uh, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And then Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And then I say unto thee, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and then the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charge his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Okay, so we have here roughly, maybe about halfway through uh, Christ earthly ministry where he is addressed. Now, mind you, they have accompanied with him uh, day and night, and they have seen him perform miracles um, from healing those that were lame. In other words, that they weren't able to walk. He was able to give them to where they were able to walk again. Uh, those that were blind were able to see again. He's healed those that were deaf, that they are able to hear those that are mute, are able to speak. Those were the demon possessed. He would cast out the demons, and then they would be whole again. Uh, they would also have individuals uh, with number of sicknesses and diseases, lepers that were healed. Um, obviously, he had fed, uh, and on two occasions, a multitude uh, out of five loaves and two fishes. Uh, 5,000 and then another one that was of 3,000 and then you also had where he calmed the waters when they were crossing over Sea of Galilee or Sea of Tiberias up in the north region and they were in the midst of a storm among many other things if we were to go to Book of John he said that daily Jesus performed miracles and if they were right everything that uh, or they were put into account everything that he had performed uh, the books you know he supposed the books of the world would not be able to contain it uh, so here you have, and he's walking through at this point in time uh, with them through Caesarea Philippi, and then he asks them something which is pretty interesting. He says, okay, who do, you, who do men say that I am? And then he asks, okay, what, who do you believe me to be? Who do you think that I am? And Peter cries out and says, uh, thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. Okay, so he gives testimony of the fact that they realize this is God Almighty, born uh, of a virgin, 
um, though in human flesh, and he's the one that has been prophesied from as far back as Genesis 3.15, that was to come and that was to take away the sin of the world. Uh, as John had proclaimed, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. And he says something pretty interesting to hear, uh, pretty interesting to Peter here, and that is that he says, uh, besides the fact that he says that uh, the, his Father which is in heaven hath revealed it unto him, um, he says, I will build my church, and then the gates of hell sh um, shall not prevail against it. But he says in particular, he says, uh, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Now, I know it's kind of silly, I'm not trying to insult anybody's intelligence, but when, what, when, when did this take place? Like, what dispensation were we in at this time? Old Testament. Yeah, we were still under the prophets. So they were still under, the temple had not been destroyed, and it wouldn't be for quite a while, actually. Uh, and they were still offering sacrifices. You still had a high priest. Uh, you still had the Holy of Holies, which was covered, and no man could go in except for the high priest once a year. Uh, so there was a veil, and that wouldn't be that wouldn't be rent. And then the presence of God wouldn't depart from there until after Christ would be raised. Yes. When you said he, this was happened about halfway through his ministry, earthly ministry. In other words, he started. He's he at age thirty is. We believe that he is when he was baptized, uh -huh. and then he, he began publicly like ministering, like preaching, and, and, and doing the healing and, and walking about all through right. Israel. Okay, and so halfway halfway through his ministry after being baptized. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 So because he only ministered uh, three and a half years, yeah. three three and a half years. So mm -hmm. um, it was only it was some somewhere in between that period of time because this is this is way before. He's got to go into Passion Week, which would have been during his final year, okay. uh, and it's it's already it's already way past as far as when it, whenever he was baptized, and he already called the twelve to him, and he had already sent them out. Uh, we read about him in you know Matthew nine and also Matthew twelve and such. And so this is this is just going about um, you know roughly through through the middle of, of when he was from thirty to thirty three. Okay. Um, getting back to this, I'm sorry. <laughs> he states to Peter, he says, I'm going to build my church. Okay, so at this point in time, this concept of church was not really known. At least it's not, not as to what we know it to be now. Okay, now the word church itself is uh, interesting where it just means like an assembly, an assemblage. So uh, it's comprised of two, in, in, in Greek, language is comprised of two words. It's a compound word, uh, so it'd be basically called out ones. But it's used in other portions of scripture. Uh, it basically, as it would be in an assembly. You would have, like in the book of Acts, whenever you have, not just as the church a church meeting, but it would be in, in a, it would, like assembly was called out, uh, called forth before, uh, whenever you had, um, I'm thinking in particular, um, Book of Acts, whenever they had gathered, you have the mob that was gathered in front of Judgment Hall. They took Jason with them, and then they were crying out, saying that these men have turned the world upside down um, and such. Um, so the word was in usage, but as far as with regard to what we would know or understand as being church, that was a foreign concept. Okay, we read, we're gonna, well, we'll read here in a little bit in Ephesians that. He states that there was to, to be this mystery. So the understanding of mystery is something that was not known or un, or you know, not necessarily like spooky, but rather that it was it was just not known. And so he would now make manifest to them of where you have Jew and Gentile to be brought together as one uh, in Christ. And so he says to him, I'm going to build my church. So okay, so this is Christ doing something new and something different. And he says, I'm going to build it upon this rock. And he, But it, before that, he says, okay, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what does that mean? Yes, sir. The word for Peter that was translated Peter is Petros, which means a stone that you could pick up and throw. A, uh, the word Petra, and then he said upon this rock, that's Petra, and that's like bedrock, or Mount, like Gibraltar, huh? 
a huge, a huge rock. Okay. What is he referencing when he says this rock, though? I know it's. We just you to mentioned me, specific to me is this, right. To me, is this test is confession that thou, thou art Christ, the Son of the Living God, or perhaps on Himself. But so is he saying that he's going to start the church with Peter? With Peter is going to be because the church is like a like a we a unity or something, or is he starting the church with this person? Okay, that's the first claim that we're addressing here. Uh, Catholic Church says that it is Peter. Oh, okay. I'm just the only reason why I'm. Getting you guys, uh, the only reason I'm asking a question, I'm not trying to insult anybody's intelligence, but to get you guys thinking, oh, wait a minute, how is it, you know? And then, I, and then it's like, okay, well, it's his testimony of the fact that Christ is the Messiah. In other words, that's the rock. Actually, it's. Oh, oh, oh I see where you're going. Because he, so, so the Catholics do believe that it's Peter's, and that's, that's definitely not true. Yeah. Gotcha. Because if, they'll, if they'll, he, they'll, they'll idolize that, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. among other things. But if yeah. Jesus had met Peter there, he would have said, Thou art Peter, and upon Peter the, the I will build my yeah. church. He didn't say that. No. He actually, the, the funny thing is, is in, 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 in Greek, he, he references himself. Ego, me, like in other words, it's a strong, it, me, me, me only. Like every time you read in the book of John where he says, I am, you know, I am the bread of life. I am uh, the light of the world. I am, and, and so forth. Uh, <laughs> There's actually, I think, a little bit more than seven, technically, but there's seven that are uh, con commonly reported as far as in the book of John, as far as the I am statements. Well, what Bible does the uh, Catholics use? Uh, they have their... Do we reign? Do we reign? That's what... It, okay. It's... They don't use that anymore, though, do they? Very much. Ah... I'm just wondering if maybe the wording is different in there, so it maybe confuses the following. Not, not from the original text. No, uh, okay. It's the thing. Okay. It's the, um, in other words, the original text is in Greek. Mm -hmm. So if you were to take, if you were to read it in a Greek manuscript, and then the, all they did was they translated from the Greek into Latin. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jerome did that, actually. And I think there's a few revisions following that, and then that's what they would use. That's why do we read, um, Doogie reigns. Uh, individuals way, 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 way after Jerome as far as uh, responsible for revision there. Mm -hmm. But... Um, Sorry, I threw you off. My bad. No, 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 no. That's fine. That's fine. They, uh, no, but they, they, they've taken a twist of. Um, the, this is just one of the three things that I was going to point out as far as that okay. being the case. So the rock being Christ himself. And then the oh, testimony of the fact that, because uh, he states in Ephesians as well that uh, it's you know Christ is a cornerstone, and then they're built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, there's no. I'll just make a bold statement here. Okay, there's no apostolic succession. In other words, following the death of the apostles, there was no other people that would be called apostles. In other words, there was nobody else that would fit the criteria for what an apostle would be, and then the apostles didn't have authority to say, okay, now I nominate you as new <laughs> apostle to follow in, in my footsteps, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, generations down. Right. Okay? Uh, the Catholic Church differs on that as far as they, they would teach different, uh, but there, that's not, if you were, well... If we, well, well, we'll go to Acts here. Oh, no, Pastor, he went over, he had a sermon about that. A yeah, he did. Ago, right? about yeah, he apostle, did. Like, you can only be an apostle if you're in the presence of all of the other apostles or something like that, or the disciples or something. Like that. No, they would have had to have company. In other words, they would have to have been alive whenever Christ was alive physically. Mm -hmm. They okay. would have had to have seen him, and then seen they would have to have seen right. him resurrected. Right. Oh, uh, okay, okay. The okay. argument that Paul was not is because... Uh, he states of himself as one being born out of due time, but he did see the risen Christ mm -hmm. on road to Damascus. Mm -hmm. And then as well, he would have been alive during the time frame of when Jesus was alive. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more than likely he would have seen him, this, though we can't verify this, but more than likely he would have seen him whenever he was baptized. Because <laughs> the Pharisees that had gone out to see uh, John baptizing, uh, Apostle John rebuked or John the Baptist rebuked 
and saying, you know, you know, what what do you what do you come out here for? You know, bring forth fruits of repentance. So it's more than likely you would have been one of the ones that would have been there uh, if you're gonna fit that criteria. But it would have been somebody that would have been that would accompany that would have seen Christ resurrected, that, that physically would have been alive during the time of Christ. Uh, but it, and after the apostles came the apostates. Yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. So Christ's um, claim here that, okay, upon this rock I'm going to build my church, he states, uh, is not referencing Peter, but rather is referencing himself. Okay, so, and he says he's going to build it, and it's his church. So mm -hmm. the church is God's idea, Jesus' mm -hmm. idea, and he's the one that actually builds it. Uh, and he builds it on himself, uh, not, not on Peter or some other human. Uh, go to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, and then we'll be looking at chapter 2 as well. Start at verse three, and then, but we're going to skip around a bit in some in chapter one and also in chapter two. It says, "Okay, blessed be God, the blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ, according as He hath chosen us uh, in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame uh, before Him in love. Okay, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself." according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glory, of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted and beloved, um, in whom we have redemption through his blood, uh, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace, and then wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. And then this is the mystery, okay, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things, uh, in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in Him. And then go down to uh, verse 16. Well, verse 15. Okay, uh, wherefore I also, after I heard of the of your faith in the Lord Jesus and the love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him, uh, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, which he raised from the dead, and set him in his own right hand in heavenly places, far above principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And I have put, put uh, all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things uh, to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is reinforcing as well the fact that Christ is, Christ is the head. Um, <clears throat> Go down to verse 11 of chapter 2. Uh, Wherefore, remember that being ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, who sometimes were afar off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our, for he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall partition between us. Now, who's he referencing here? I know this is kind of jumping in the middle of a context, but who would he be referencing here? Jews and Gentiles. Yes. So, in other words, he's addressing a congregation that's primarily Gentile, but it has a number of Jews in it. Uh, if we were to go to the book of Acts, we see that church at Ephesus was started whenever he came to Ephesus 
Uh, he was able to stay there roughly almost three years, about two, two and a half years. Um, and he was teaching at, well, he was teaching and preaching within the marketplace with whoever would, whatever, um, whoever, basically whoever would give him audience. And then also he was able to teach at a, a there's a gentleman by the name of Tyrannus that's named, who had a school and he was able to teach there. And then from there, uh, basically, Asia would come to know the gospel. So it was it was a hub for, it was not only just as a city, it was a port city and as well as it was a uh, educational hub and everything like that, but it was a place from where uh, through the time that he was teaching there, he was able to influence a number of people who would take the gospel all over. Uh, one of them being Epaphras, who would go back to Colossae and then start the Church of Colossae, because uh, Apostle Paul actually never went that far out uh, in, in, in Asia. But um, anyways, so he's, he's, he's making reference here to the fact, okay, now there's a division that is no longer there. So now we got Jews and Gentiles being uh, put together. And then verse 15, it says, Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, uh, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make him himself uh, twain one new man, uh, making peace, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, and then having slain the enmity thereby. Uh, skip down to verse 19. Okay, now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens and saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone okay, and mm. the, uh, yeah. all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the spirit okay so he's referencing here as well something that God is continually doing yes sir that verse right there, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, that that really is a scripture interpreting scripture on that ma what we just read. Yeah, on Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Yeah, so, but it yeah. can also be confusing, I guess, on Matthew 16 too, right? Because it says, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. So I guess that's where they could like, misinterpret mm -hmm. it. They could. Because um, in Matthew 16 where it says, you know, I build it upon this rock after these things, you know, Simon Peter or whatever. The interesting thing, like it, when you, when you're, all right, when you're building a floor, mm -hmm. like the, well, you would know better because you're the actual construction. You're an engineer. Uh, we don't just build houses without having a foundation. And the reason why is because it would just sink to the ground. And even then, what you do, uh, we do it to some degree here. Uh, but not as much. Uh, you see it more up north, um, where you have what's called a footer, mm -hmm. or footers, yeah. and that's basically like you dig holes down to where you hit rock, and then what you do is you build up so that your house rests on it. All right. So, well, we kind of do the same thing. You would have to anywhere you go because otherwise, what happens is if you don't have anything solid, yes, sir. Sink, yeah. But you lay the cornerstone down first. Yeah, and because says, that's that's where you get your square. Apostles and prophets, Jesus being the chief cornerstone, so he laid the cornerstone first, and everything is laid to those cornerstones. Yeah, the reason you do that is because otherwise your your house isn't going to be square. The reason why you want it square is because otherwise it's going to be yeah. just it's going to build weird. It's not going to be stable. All right, so and to this day, when bricklayers lay brick, they always lay the corners first, and then they fill in between. Yeah. Yes. Very <laughs> true. <laughs> I've never had the theory uh, because I've, every every place I've ever gone to work is just okay. Do this, do that, do this, do that. Yeah. But that's an observation that I've made, mm -hmm. uh, and it's like, wow, okay, this is really interesting. Um, you know, so Christ being the chief cornerstone, and upon that, okay, and then you have uh, gotcha. the rest of the foundation. So He's the one. He's the primary off of which everything else is going to be coming from. And then. It's the follow up. Chief. Yeah, and then um, now foundation of apostles and prophets. Now we're we're told here. Uh, that cornerstone comparison will help out. You know, if I ever have to explain that to someone. 
Yes, go go to chapter four. Well, also he doesn't mention Paul doesn't mention Peter there at all. He just says the apostles and prophets. Because they were all given for mm -hmm. the church. It wasn't just specifically Peter himself, but it was it was the, all the apostles that were given because they were they were yes. The foundation of the prophets and the apostles would be their doctrine, right? The doctrine they, that they teach that Christ taught them. That's what it's built on. The, uh, the term apostle itself is just sent one or sent one with a message. Yeah, with the truth. Yeah, so now someone would argue that, well, isn't a missionary, or even for that matter, something like a church planner or something like that, a modern day apostle in a sense. Uh, but the only reason that argument would fail is because of the criteria that we see in Acts as far as what an apostle, a legitimate apostle, coming from other ones that were apostles that were directly, basically assigned by Christ himself. Uh, and they, priced, they preached Christ and him crucified, according to Paul in 1 Corinthians 15. Yes. So, so and, he's the foundation. And then he states here, we'll go to Acts here in a, in a bit, in Acts chapter 20, and we're going to see something that's a little interesting. Mm -hmm. But he says here that um, okay, in verse 20 uh, are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets and then in whom all the buildings fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple. All right, okay, so you have additional building taking place beyond just what is laid as foundation. So the idea is the apostles and prophets are just foundational. In other words, it's once you have a foundation laid, there's no need for them. They're they're only foundational. They're, in other words, they weren't they weren't necessary beyond the laying of the foundation. So the laying of the foundation would be initial when you're starting out before you start you know building framing walls and uh, any other you know building a roof uh, and, and any of the other aspects of, of a building that's being built. But there, yes. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3.11 says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And uh, Apostle, well, Pastor does a little bit better job of explaining this, but the apostles and prophets, since there are no continuing apostles and there are no continuing prophets, uh, what that would be is what we have today. Our, the Word of God is what was preserved of apostles and prophets. Make sense? Like in other words, apostles and what they taught, their teaching, was preserved here in in God's book. So that's what. Yes. That's like the building plans. Yes. Yeah, basically. Yes. Uh, so they were foundational, and they were built uh, in chapter four, verse eleven. Um, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. And he gave them for this specific reason, it says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, uh, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Um, note, uh, not everybody, well, okay, uh, verse 11, he says he gave some, or he gave some apostles and prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Uh, and then verse 12, it says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Uh, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So the idea there is, is that apostles and prophets, which were foundational, were given, and then he has given as well additional some individuals as evangelists and pastors and teachers, and that's for specifically perfecting or the maturing <coughs> of the saints, so that the saints, along with uh, apostles, and prophets which were foundational which we don't have well we have here in the word of God but we have remaining uh, evangelists pastors and teachers uh, for the work of the ministry so in other words it's all inclusive in other words all believers are called to work of ministry that's a believers responsibility uh, the believers responsibility basically to walk with God to mature so that they would be involved in the work of the ministry uh, and it's for the edifying of the body of Christ. Body of Christ being those believers. So in other words, our believers are to be built up, and God's design also as well is for believers to be added. In other words, he wants unbelievers to come to know him so that they would be added to his body, and then the body would all grow in a continuing cycle. 
uh, that we see here. It says, till we all come into the unity of the faith, to the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Uh, in other words, basically until Christ returns or we go home, until we die or until Christ comes back. So it's a, it's a continuing thing that God has. Um, What was the point with that? Oh. Um, this body that is Christ over who he is head. Um, where is this seen? How is it comprised? What's the expression? The church. Which one? Huh? Which, which one? Saints. What was the question? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm confusing. Okay, so we have. God speaking here of he's building he's building his church, right? He's using believers to do that. Uh, how? Where is that? Where, like where's it taking place? Or how, where how's that seen? How's that? What's the expression of that? Like, what? How do? You, how's that manifest? How is God building his church manifest? I'm not making myself clear. Am I? Okay. Yes. Through the individual believers putting together. Is it limited to just that? What? Is it is God's body limited to just that? Well probably not, but tell us. <laughs> okay. Alright, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm maybe I'm framing okay. The all right, the word Catholic means like throughout, like in other words, like throughout the idea of it is like throughout the whole world. Universal. universal. Yeah, universal. All right, so they would argue you in saying that we're the only legitimate universal church that's around. Because you can go through anywhere on, you know, the earth as far as however many uh, <coughs> countries there are. And you can see, you know, whatever uh, Catholic church for the most part, in almost every single one. Not quite anymore, but uh, you could. Um, is it limited to just that? No, and here's why. It's because, okay, the church itself is comprised of those that are born-again believers resting on uh, Christ being the cornerstone. So he's the foundation. And those that are adhering to, to the Word of God, I mean, they've I don't know that they ever really adhered to it because they were originally created as a political organization. They would argue that. They would say, okay, we started all the way back from when Christ stated that, you know, you know you're Peter and upon this rock I'm going to build my church. And then from that time forward, okay, here, God went ahead and started his church and we've just continued on. Uh, but officially they didn't really start till 313 whenever Constantine declared uh, say again uh, well he, he just declared that Christianity was legal within the Roman Empire and then they wouldn't officially become state religion until further on down I think 328 but yes sir That's another thing that refutes the Catholic idea that Peter was the head of the church Peter isn't even mentioned in any of Paul's letters except when he, he just refers to Peter leading about a sister or wife. And the only time that you see Peter in a location after the crucifixion is when he's in Babylon. And it's obviously, it, if they say Babylon was Rome, then, then, Rome, is, then Rome is the whore of Revelation 17. But uh, I, it really, I, I think there's no evidence that he was ever in Rome. I don't think he was, yeah. You're right on that. I don't, I don't recall any. Um, he did rebuke him to his face in Galatians. I remember that as far as because he had 
And that was at Antioch? With the, uh, with the Judaizers, mm -hmm. yeah. Because um, he had led brethren astray as far as the Judaizers had come through. But yes, and then um, there is a universal aspect to it. Uh, and some people would want to say, like, okay, they would prefer the term body of Christ rather than universal church. Uh, whatever I think is semantic as far as I don't mind the term as long as you define it. Uh, here's why, because the fact is that Christ's body isn't limited to just your local entity. Like for in other words, like uh, we're Christ's body here in Oakland Park. Okay, if you have uh, another local church that is following Christ within our region, you know, we even within Oakland Park or whatever, then they, they would be as much Christ's body as what we are, uh, as well as those believers that have gone on since uh, the time of Pentecost till now, even going forward until whenever Christ returns uh, to take us up. And so they are as much as uh, Christ's body as what we are, as what would be uh, Marathon Baptist or, uh, you know, you can name off any other uh, Local, local, local body, which is an expression of it. So there's an express. There's, there's a twofold expression. You have the local church. In other words, you have your local body, uh, which is an expression of. And we are how God. You know, that's uh, God's determining as far as where we are. You know, what we would be a body part within His body. In other words, we might be a finger, we might be a toe, we might be an eye, we might be an ear, uh, as well as the others, and then even. Us individually within this body, we are, uh, as Christ would have it be, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit, as He gifted us, uh, we might be a finger or toe or an eye or an ear uh, within this local body, as was the believers that have gone on uh, since the time of Pentecost um, that had come to Christ and were in a local, local, local body. There is much a body of Christ as what we are. I don't know if I'm being confusing here. You guys are understanding. In other words, there's a, there's, there is a local expression, the local church, and then you also have the body of Christ, universal, in the sense of, okay, believers from Pentecost till now, going forward until whenever Christ returns, that are as much of the body of Christ. Uh, so it's not just limited, okay, to, the, uh, to that. Uh, go to Acts chapter 20, Acts 20. Then the last one we'll look is at Luke 11. I'm not, not going to really help you for that one. Okay, so Acts 20. The last one we're going to be looking at is at Luke 11, but Acts chapter 20 real quick. Um, uh, verse 17. It says, and from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when, he, and when they had come to him, he said unto them, You know that I am... Uh, that from the first day that I came unto you, into Asia after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations which befell me uh, by the lying weight of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing, was, and, uh, that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. Uh, go down to... Go down to verse 28. Uh, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over which the Holy Ghost hath made the overseers to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. For uh, I know this, uh, after that my departing shall grievous wolves come in among you, not sparing the flock. And then also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Uh, therefore watch and remember that by a space of three 
years I cease not to warn every man, uh, warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, verse 32, and then, now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all which are sanctified. Okay, so he gives us a, a charge in verse 28, take heed. And then verse 32, he says, I commend you to God. All right. Again, this is another to reinforcement to the argument. He was an apostle, and he would have been one of the foundational ones that would have been responsible for going and teaching doctrine and giving instruction to everybody with regard to, you know, what, what, what is this mystery that we know now as the church? Uh, and he says, I'm commending you unto God. All right. So you don't have any succession of apostles following. Following that, everybody was, in other words, basically commended to God, so they're entrusted to God. So believers from that point forward, you, know, you, you read further in the New Testament, you see that as well, um, until, you know, they've all passed. All the apostles have passed. Yes? Just to backtrack a little bit, just I'm curious, on the, at 18, where it says, uh, you know, from the first day that I came into Asia, after what man have been with you at all seasons. Um, any idea what part of Asia? I'm just curious for some other study on, on the Macedonia? Is that no, it Turkey. Asia, like India, Asia? Or no, Turkey. Turkey? Asia Minor. Yeah, it would. Asia oh, okay. Asia is basically on the Far East, mm -hmm. like, you know, China right. uh, and such, yes. as far as mainland. Gotcha. Uh, and then on the Far West, it, you know, um, if you go down all the way south, you Turkey, technically Saudi Arabia, but it would be Turkey. Uh, up along the coast, you would have Israel, Lebanon, and, and all the way up to Turkey. And, and then when it says, I have been with you at all seasons, what exactly is the uh, reference in there at all seasons? Uh, good time, bad time, in time of uh, persecution, gotcha. uh, in time of blessing. And such. In other words, you know, I, I, I haven't deserted you guys gotcha. whenever the time got tough. Okay. Got it. Thanks, man. Not a problem. Okay. <coughs> Last one. Luke 11 27, and this is it. And it came to pass as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice. Now this is Jesus speaking to a crowd of people, uh, giving instruction. And then there's a lady within the, comp within the crowd there of the people that he was speaking to. And then she says, she lifted her for void and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which thou hast sucked. And then verse 28 is his response to her. And he says, but he said, yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. All right. I'm not going to have time for covering this one, but as far as like Mary worship. Why is Mary worship? What's the big deal? I mean, yeah, she was, in a, I guess you could say she's the mother of God. But here was somebody that came about, even during Jesus' lifetime, and said, hey, look, man, blessed is, blessed is your mom, mm -hmm. you know? And it's not like he was disrespectful to his mom or anything like that, but he says, you know, yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. In other words, she's human. Yeah. <laughs> she's just, and she acknowledges that we would go read through the rest of Luke or whatever. Earlier on in the beginning, I'm sorry, that you would see that she acknowledged, okay, look, I'm a human, I'm in need of a savior as well. Uh, so in other words, Mary worship is my heart shall rejoice in God my Savior. Yes. Yes. Oh, you're just saying that to refute like, you know, the whole worshiping Mary and stuff. Yeah, like among that. other things. I just don't have the time to go ahead and finish because we're almost out of time. Little Mary, I don't think it's you know, necessary. Just, I mean, I think she was an important, I guess, vessel, right? I mean, she was yeah, because she was holy. Right. But in other words, she was still just a simple, wicked individual like anybody else. She believed on Christ and she right. needed his salvation. Even though she carried him to term yeah. and yeah. raised him in a sense, but okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Except an observation, right? Yes. About the topic in general, I, a lot of 
This is actually more important to know than you might realize, because I'm thinking of a person I knew years ago. Her name is Lisa, a very sweet person, very solid Christian, that she did not, I remember her saying that she thought that Peter actually really was the first pope. So a lot of people that are born again, genuine born again believers, really don't understand this very well. Mm -hmm. So I, and it's more important to, to know the truth in detail than I think people realize. Just an observation. Yes. And when they say Mary, the mother of God, she was the mother of Jesus, but not the mother of God. Amen. Jesus is God, but mm -hmm. his human body is, is, she's the mother of his human body, but not, she's not the mother of God. Yeah, because God, yeah. God didn't have a, he's, he's from, from old, from everlasting. Yeah, he's always existed. Sad. No questions? Okay, we're dismissed. You need, to get up. you need to get up and get a drink of water or go to the bathroom or anything. Stacy? Here. Hi, Look who's sitting behind you. Hi. Hi. I didn't see all those people back there. <laughs>